If you can believe it, the Terraria slash Don't Starve Together crossover event released half a year ago already. But you know what they say, time flies when you're having fun. We have reworked the twins, added magical weapons, and have even gotten the fright of our life staring down the first person gullet of the eye of terror. And heck, we went as far as to force the Terraria Deer Claps and King Slime bosses into the flipping game. But you know what we have yet to do? An official guide on all the eyes. Now that changes today. That changes now. Well, after we locate the conspicuous chest, of course. AKA, Don't Starve Together's newest set piece. In my experience, there are three, maybe four separate chest spawns from the Guardian slash Pig Berry Circle that happens to activate when you touch the thing. The Pigmen slash Spider slash Frogs nonsense that also typically features a dead survivor boon of wood and axes, but no real danger beyond all that. And lastly, the circle of evil burning flowers with an already burned out pig house. As I said, those are the ones I see most often. But let us know if there's another conspicuous chest set piece out there in our forests. And oh yeah, all these should be guaranteed spawns in one of your forest biomes. But before we get right into the fight here, here is the loot table of these conspicuous chests. It's not bad, honestly. Just mostly random and a one-time draw, unfortunately. Still, really the only thing we truly care about is the terrarium. Now while it can be corrupted with nightmare fuel, for our purposes here today, all we need to do is drop it, activate it, wait for nightfall and its own colorful show to end, and eventually the Eye of Terror boss will be upon us. Now the thing boasts 5000 health, which is pretty average for non-raid bosses in this game, 62.5 damage per hit, which ain't bad, minions which are annoying, and a charging attack that could get both annoying and dangerous pretty quickly. But speaking of being quick, any speed boost that you can use to your advantage will certainly mitigate any of this, so bear that in mind. Now do you need speed? No, but it will make things much easier, so trust me on that. What also goes a long way to making this fight just a wee bit simpler though, is doing your best to eliminate the suspicious peepers before they can wake up and enter the fight proper. Now you've got a decent amount of time to do this, but in phase one, the eye only spawns one peeper on occasion, which is why you have so much time. Because come phase two, it's gonna spawn two peepers per, and with phase two also requiring more time spent on dodging, things are gonna overwhelm you fast. But the solution you ask? A pan flute. Use it to get a breather, or if you're falling behind on killing what needs to be killed of course. Other than that, note how the eye will enter phase 2 once it falls below 3250 health, and while its damage won't change, it will gain a new close ranged melee that will create a temporary sinkhole that might slow us down, as well as more charges per charge attack. This is where speed truly shines, but again, this whole fight is doable without it. Just watch for the eye's spin. If it starts to spin, run and weave as it's either charging at you or doing a melee. Oh, also pay attention to its animation when it starts spawning peepers, as this is an awesome opportunity to get some extra hits. That always helps. Good luck. But hold up just a moment here. What exactly is the deal with these peepers, by the way? Ah yes, these little guys can be quite the hassle, as they will persist even after the eye dies or simply despawns for the night, have 200 health themselves, deal 20 damage each, and have some range to their bites. Now they are kiteable for sure, but I think you can see why you don't want them around while you're dealing with the true threats. But hold up again, Beard. What do you mean by the eye quote unquote simply despawning? Well, exactly that. Similar to how bosses like the Eye of Cthulhu do in Terraria itself, once morning hits, any alive eye or twin of terror will straight up fly away for the day until the very next night. And that's the kicker. Unlike Terraria, we can summon the boss again, and it will return with the same amount of health missing, making for an arguably easier bout. Be mindful though, every subsequent night we don't respawn the boss, it will regenerate 250 health. 
not good. And since chances are we won't be able to solo this thing in one night with most characters, even during a long winter's evening, mind you, I should suggest some help to speed things up. At 5,000 health, the thing can very easily be blown to bits by gunpowder, so as long as you use less than 25 of the stuff, this might be the most efficient method out there at least for time. But we can also choose to pamphlet the thing to death, although be warned, you will very likely deplete said pamphlet down to but one to three uses remaining, depending on how often you do choose to use it. Or, as a last resort, or if you have no friends at all, followers can be cannon fodder and help drain its health fast in order to help you finish it off. Thing is though, with the eye dealing 125 damage to all mobs and its phase 2 charging like crazy, said followers are not gonna last long. You do you, but if you have friends, bring them, because then this fight becomes a cinch. Wherever the case and however it gets done, two things still remain the same. The Terrarium enters a 15 day cooldown by default, and the Eye of Terror will drop 2 to 4 monster meat, 3 to 5 milky whites, its own figure sketch, and of course the Eye Mask armor. So let's discuss. And we'll start with the potential fact that the Eye Mask really isn't all that great, honestly. Now don't get me wrong, as it is pretty darn neat and does compete with a football helmet at the end of the day, but my main gripe with it is that it could fully break if it hits 0%. Now I personally believe it shouldn't be able to do such a thing, but I also get this too. We can quote unquote refuel it via foods, some foods being better than others of course, and that kinda makes up for it. Now if you want the maths, we can take a food's hunger value, multiply it by 4, and then add the food's hunger value multiplied by 1.75 to that to help get back how much durability will be returned. That, or just know that monster meat returns roughly 35% each time. It's cool stuff, but as I said, it could be a little better. And you know, perhaps the very same could be said for Milky Whites. Now they have never been good alone, as you can clearly see here, but they have always counted as a dairy product, which is a major plus, because dairy only comes from three things in this game. Butter, electric milk, and now Milky Whites. So to have a pile of the stuff dropped from a farmable and relatively easy boss is awesome. That said, all it could be used for is ice cream for sanity and the milkmaid hat for a hunger gimmick. For you see, other dairy recipes like waffles, lobster dinner, and fresh fruit crepes all require butter dairy specifically. So I think you see the pitfalls here. But hey, at least we got the friendly peeper, am I right? With milky whites and bacon and eggs, this little guy can be yours via the rock den. Now we don't do much as is Critter Tradition, but at least he's new. Oh, as are these two. The Eye of Terror statues, folks. Show off your victories. And there you have it, everyone. A super late guide on the Eye of Terror introduced all the way back in the Terraria crossover event and our first official boss guide in literal years. Now I enjoyed that fact, and I enjoyed focusing on things towards a single big bad so much here today that don't worry, there will be more to come, and the twins won't be far behind. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wishes to all. Be sure to take an eye for an eye, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.